everyone welcome to the last video of the house price prediction video series so in the first video we have clearly discussed the basic requirements for this project and i have shown you the final website that we are going to build in the second video we have trained our linear regression model on the house prices data set in the third video we have done some basic settings on pie chart in the fourth video we have designed our home page in the fifth video we have designed our predict page and in the sixth video that is the last video we are basically going to link our machine learning code that we wrote in the second video to our website so right now our website is looking like this let me open it okay so this is the home page of our website once i click on this start button another page will be opened and here we are supposed to enter the values and when this predict button will be clicked the result will be shown at the bottom the result will be shown at the bottom so right now when i click on this predict button nothing will happen because we have not yet mapped our machine learning code to this button so in this video we are basically going to do this now let me open the predict.html page okay so um, here you can see that there is this submit button and when the submit button will be clicked the predict slash result url will be opened as per this this statement now let me go to the urls.py file okay it so here you can see that when this predict slash result url will be opened the result method of views.py file will be opened or you can say will be called now here in the views.py file when this result method will be called now as per this code uh, it will do nothing it will just return the predict.html page so that's why nothing happens here when i click on this predict button it simply opens this now here we are um, now here what we want is whenever we call this result method our machine learning code should execute and the corresponding result should be displayed so here we are going to write our machine learning code in in this result method now we have already written that code in the second video if you have not watched that video i will provide its link in the description you can watch it from there so this was the code that we wrote let me run this thing again okay so these are some of the important libraries that are required and here let me run this cell so this is the data set that we are going to use now its link will also be there in the description you can download it from there this data set is having a total of 7 columns now since this address columns not giving us much information so we will drop this so now only 6 columns are left so here let me run this cell again and here i have checked for any missing data but there is no missing data in this data set okay so now here the test so here the test train split is done let me run this again then this training and prediction is done here predictions are made here so here what uh, we have done is we have split our data set into four parts basically that is x train x test y train and y test and we have trained our linear regression model on x train and y train and its result is stored in this variable called model and then we have made predictions on the x underscore test data set but when we are going to use this model on our website we are not supposed to make predictions on the test set rather we are going to make predictions on the values that are provided by the user that is mm, the values that we will enter here will be used as an input to the model so we are supposed to do some basic settings so, okay so we are supposed to do some basic settings here in this line and then we will uh, display our result so here i have also calculated the root mean square error but we don't need this anymore in our website so let me just copy this code 
in the result method of the views.py file. Okay. So first of all, let me add the important libraries. I can just copy and paste it here because the code is going to be almost same. Okay. All right. Now let me add this line here in this. Now all this, now all this code we are going to write in this result method. Let me copy this thing and we don't need to display this data here in our website. So I'll not copy this line. Let me drop the address column. Next, we don't need to add this code for checking the missing data. That was just for our need. Okay, so train test split. Let me copy this whole thing and paste it here. Hmm. Now the training and prediction part. Let me copy these lines and paste it here again. Now here on the right hand side, you can see that the predictions have been made on the X set on the X underscore test set, but we want to make some changes here. So what I will do is I will first fetch the values that are entered by the user here. And on the basis of those values, I will uh, make predictions. So let me fetch the values and store them in variables. Let's create a variable called var1. Okay, so uh, here in the predict.html page, so the first input type that was text and for average area income, so its name is n1. So here what, what will happen is that value will be stored in this variable called var1. Similarly, we can fetch the other values as well. I can just copy and paste because everything is going to be same except the variable name and this name of the input type. So there are a total of five independent variables. So these variables are now stored in, in these variables var1, var2 and up to var5. Now we want to make predictions on these variables. For that let me create another variable called pred which is equal to model dot predict. Here it should be here it should be np dot array Now these variables, these var1 up to var5, these are to be input uh, to this predict method in a form of np array. So first of all, here we are creating an np array from these variables. So let me write them here in the form of a list. So first of all, I've created a list of all these variables. Then I have converted them into an NP array and then I have inputted to the predict method. So from this, this line of code, the predict variable will contain a list that will contain only one value that will be the final price. So we just want that value in a form of a float variable, not a list. So we can just use it as round function we can use the round function here because the result is having good precision and red zero so this red zero will fetch the first element of the list and this list is only containing one element so the uh, only element will be fetched from this line and now what we want is we don't want to uh, like return this price only 
that will be stored in this predict function. We want a proper statement. So let's suppose I want that when I click on this uh, that submit button, I want the result as the predicted price is uh, so and so dollars. So for that, uh, let me create a string and name is that and name it as price. The predicted price is dollar then plus string of this spread. This spread is the predicted price. So it's now done. Now I can just return this price variable. For that here we have to add an extra argument. Okay, so this price is this variable and this result too is the variable this one that is there in the predict.html page. So make sure both of these names are same. Here it was result two and here it also here it is also result two. Okay, so let me now save this thing and from the from here you can see that there is no error. Now I can just refresh this thing let me go to the home page first of all start okay so now we are going to test this website so i can test for so i can test for any random value from our data set let me open my data set first okay so this is our data set now let's uh, randomly check on this fifth row I can just copy and paste these values and check what is the price as per our website. So let me copy and paste these values. Copy and paste it here. Average area house age copy. Paste it here. Average area number of rooms. Paste it here. Average area bedrooms. Paste it here. And average area population. Paste it here. So let me click on this predict button. Okay, there is some error. It says that file not found error. Means I guess this file is not available. Okay, let me open the code. Okay, so there is some path issue. I have not mentioned the correct path for this CSV file. So let me make the changes here. Okay, so this is now the full path for this CSV file. Let me save this and refresh this thing. Okay, there is some another error. So there is some issue with the shape of the input data. So it says that reshape your data either using array.reshape if a data has a single feature or array.reshape one comma minus one if it contains a single sample. So let me make the changes here. So here this thing has to be reshaped. Let me do it. Dot reshape and it should be one comma minus one. Okay, so let me uh, save this and refresh our page again. Okay, now our server has been started. Okay, so here you can see that this result has been displayed here at the bottom. It says that the predicted price is dollar this 11 lakh something. So let's check from our Excel sheet that what was the actual price. So we have done our testing on this fifth row and actual price was 12 lakh something and our estimated price is 11 lakh something. So it is almost equal. So here you can see that our website is working fine. So similarly, you can test your result on some another values as well. So this was all about the house price prediction project. So hope you liked the videos. 
If you are having any error in any of the videos, you can write it down in the comment section. I will definitely try to sort it out. So thanks a lot for watching the videos.